Cureleaf, it, it is a medical cannabis company. I mean, we're all over the world. In fact, I think we just um, started doing medical cannabis sales in Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, we're expanding everywhere. Wow. Um, in the state of Florida specifically, because I work with the state, mm -hmm. uh, we have 62 locations that are either, um, you can either shop there or delivering. Um, but yeah, basically it's a cannabis, we distribute cannabis products from the plant. Now people are used to hearing cannabis or marijuana and they're right. thinking people smoking joints and getting high. But, um, you know, when I got the job at the store, I said part of this journey is I also want to learn the science behind stuff. I want to learn about the products. I want to learn why we use certain things for certain ailments and reasons. And mm -hmm. so there's so many products now and so many parts of the flower that are being extracted and used uh, for health and wellness benefits. Right. So Cureleaf is uh, basically a distributor uh, of alternative medicine where people can don't have to use the medicines that have they've been pushed down their throats for so long, yeah. specifically for the pharmaceutical. What is up, everybody? We are here, another episode of the Stay Tranquilo podcast. We're here at Vic Garcia Studios, and we got Matt from Curaleaf on, and uh, it's gonna be a hell of an episode today. We're excited, we got 420 coming up, so uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on, but I think we got a lot of good things coming in this episode. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, just the education around cannabis and kind of the, the current uh, stigmas around it. We're gonna talk about Matt and his journey with, with cannabis, and then some of the awesome events going on with, with Cure Leaf that they have going on for 420. So before we get into things, we'd love for you to introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about yourself, you know, the journey that, uh, your professional journey into how you started working with can uh, cannabis and, and with Cure Leaf. So, uh, you know, whatever you wanna let the people know. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm actually a Floridian. I grew up in Florida, uh, Orlando. I went to school at the University of Florida. Go Gators. <laughs> um, but uh, when I graduated from college, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And my mom's advice was to make a list of things I was passionate about. So I literally made a list and, you know, I had so many random things. But then she said, all right, now go through it and see how you can, like, make a career out of something. Like, can you find a career? And I saw basketball. I saw community. I saw Orlando on there. And I said, hmm, I wonder if I could work for my favorite sports team, the Orlando Magic. Applied for an internship, got it. And uh, that was the start of my professional journey. I worked my way up to a assistant director level at the Orlando Magic. Nice. I ran basically all the entertainment at the game. So if you've ever been to a sports game, I did everything from the anthem and halftime, uh, the guys shooting the $10,000 half court shots, <laughs> you know, all, nice. all the fun stuff yeah. when they're not playing. Um, and that was a super fun journey. I was there for 13 seasons. Uh, one year we went to the finals against the Lakers, Kobe yep. Bryant. That was super, uh, super fun journey. Yeah, Magic had a nice little run there for for a couple of years. They did, they did, and I, and they're having and they're back year. right now. I was gonna they're say they're having right a good now. year this year yeah. too. So um, that was that was the start of my professional journey. It was great. Um, in 2018, uh, they kind of re rearranged some things at the organization, okay. and I had to find a new. Uh, new journey. Um, I actually uh, decided to do the same exercise and make a list of things I was passionate about because I think for work, it's important to do something that you really care about. And, and you know, in Orlando, Absolutely. I was, I was magic Matt, you know, being, a, being with the magic was part of my identity. So I really wanted to find another career that I, that I really felt the same way about. Absolutely. And I realized that uh, cannabis was uh, the way to go. Now, I didn't have any ins in, on, in the cannabis industry. I wasn't even really familiar how the industry worked. But I decided the same way how I started with the magic with an internship. I was going to have to get my, oh, wow. foot, my foot in the door. So after an assistant director level, you went back and basically I got a part-time job at a dispensary. Wow. I, I, I applied at multiple dispensaries and uh, finally one of them gave me a chance. And was it a cure relief? It was, yeah. Okay. You know, a couple of them told me I was overqualified, which, you know, I probably was, but again, I was willing to start there because I wanted my foot in the door. That's um, a pretty, I guess <clears throat> you could say like humbling experience to say the least, but you know, it's, it's cool that you know, not many people you know, can put their egos aside for a second and say, hey, I'm gonna kind of 
almost start over in this journey, right? I've worked for 15 years in my career and, you know, that path ended and that journey ended and that chapter of my life ended. But here I am looking to start something new and you were willing to say, hey, I'll start from here and start from the, you know, from the roots and grow from there. And that's, that's pretty admirable. Not a lot of people would say that they would do that. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I mean, I, uh, at the same time, I was applying for other jobs and I was interviewing at places and I just didn't feel it. Yeah. I, and I, I, to me, again, the passion is really important for me. I agree. Um, because I want to believe in what I'm doing. 100%. Yeah, I, I think people nowadays are becoming more aware of that, right? Where it's like your work life can also be something that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be your ultimate biggest hobby in the world and has to be your job at the same time. But if you're going to be spending at the minimum 40 hours a week of a, for, a, for the rest of your lifetime, essentially, right? You should enjoy it at some capacity, right? If you're waking up and you're miserable every single day, one, you have the choice to be able to make that change and say, hey, you know what? This is not for me. Maybe I go and I write a list of things that I'm passionate about and start at the bottom up and look what it led to you for you, right? Like I, I think that's something that a lot of people can learn from because not a lot of people, they're, you know, they might be an accountant or they might be a lawyer, right? Or they might be a doctor, all great jobs, right? But they're showing up every day and they're not happy, right? And I think that alone right there should be the trigger that there's a sign for change there. And, and to be honest with you, you know, the part-time job at the dispensary w wasn't really it financially what I wanted of course, to start yeah, with, yeah. But, but I supplemented with Uber at the time too, you know, because I, I knew what I wanted to do and where the opportunity that's could awesome. take me. So. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome, man. I, I really admire that. And I think more people need to be able to, to do that, to get the life that they want and, and take a little bit of a risk because it, it is a risk, right? Like, that you don't really know when you're making that decision you don't know if that's even the right decision to be making right i'm sure for you you were like it felt right but in the back of your head you're still like damn do i really want to do this like i'm gonna take less pay work less hours become an uber driver like those are things that not a lot of people would say that they would be willing to do to get what they want i felt like i was at a place in my life where this was <clears throat> that's what i needed to do to make this opportunity happen um, I also felt pretty confident that once I got my foot in the door and, you know, I was able to learn about the industry That's and get awesome. to know people that I'd, I'd find some growth, which actually happened pretty yeah. quickly for me. Um, I went from a part-timer to a full-time, um, and then I actually became an assistant manager of the store. Nice. And this happened um, more rapidly than, uh, you know, the typical movement mm -hmm. in, in an organization. Um, I remember, though, there was a marketing uh, associate that came in one day. We had just launched our new uh, plant precision. It's a topical gel. And she came and she set up a table in the store and she put the skirt on and promoted it and had all the stuff. And I was like, ah, that's what I want to do. Gotcha. I used to, you know. Promote, yeah, you were used to that world. I used to promote yeah. the Orlando Magic in exactly. the community. And and I, I, can like, prom I can promote cannabis. So I, so I told her, I said, you know. I said, well, when she was done, I said, can I help you carry your bin to your car? And I did, and I had introduced myself and told her my cool. background. I said, this is what I want to do. I want your job. And, <laughs> and um, she said, yeah, everybody wants to, you know, gave me some advice. Mm -hmm. And I, I stuck with it, and now I have that position. Absolutely. So, Good yeah. stuff, man. So that was what year? 20? Uh, this is a few. I'm going on uh, about two and a half years at CureLeaf. So okay. about two and a half years ago. So two and a half years that you've been with CureLeaf. So now that you've been with CureLeaf, can you tell us a little bit? You know, what is CureLeaf? What exactly do you guys do? You know, what is it that you guys stand for as an organization? Um, I'm, I'm sure everyone's seen the signs, right? But it's a lot deeper than just like, hey, there's marijuana there, or there's weed there, or there's cannabis there, right? Or there's some gels there. Like, there's a lot more to it, and I know you know that, right? Oh, so absolutely. Yeah, can I you mean, tell everyone a little bit of what CureLeaf is? Yeah, CureLeaf, it is a medical cannabis company. I mean, we're all over the world. In fact, I think we just um, started doing medical cannabis sales in Czech Republic. Uh, yeah, we're expanding everywhere. Wow. Um, in the state of Florida specifically, because I work with the state, mm -hmm. uh, we have 62 locations that are either, um, you can either shop there or delivering. Um, but yeah, basically it's a cannabis, we distribute cannabis products from the plant. Now people are, used to hearing cannabis or marijuana and right. thinking people smoking joints and getting high. But, um, you know, when I got the job at the store, I said part of this journey is I also want to learn the science behind stuff. I want to learn about the products. I want to learn why we use certain things for 
certain ailments and reasons. And mm -hmm. so there's so many products now and so many parts of the flower that are being extracted and used uh, for health and wellness benefits. Right. So CureLeaf is uh, basically a distributor uh, of alternative medicine where people can don't have to use the medicines that have, they've been pushed down their throats for so long, yeah. specifically for the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, I think that's the biggest one is obviously the reputation around pharmaceutical drugs has been one that's not very great, right? Um, I think there's a lot of people that have used them in the past and it hasn't been the best thing for them. And I know we'll, we'll kind of touch on that a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper, but it is good to see, right? You want to look for more holistic and more natural remedies essentially for whatever those issues may be. Right. I, and you, you can kind of correct me here, wherever, wherever I might, wherever I may be wrong, but you know, a lot of the things that cannabis is helping people is there's the, the issues with PTSD, there's, there's stuff with anxiety and depression. Um, you have people with, with cancer that it's supposed to ease some of the symptoms when they're on um, doing their chemo practices, right? So there's, there's a ton of research, right? And I think that's also one of the things that goes into this industry, right? Is how can we back this off, back this up with research behind it and prove to the people that, hey, this could actually be a solution for you, right? Just like anything, it might what 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 might work for one person may not work for another, right? And I think that's a big thing too. And it's like there's no and all be all for everything, right? I mean, some things work, some things don't, and it depends on the person. But you always have to keep your options open, right? And I think that's where cannabis comes in. It's like, how can we facilitate this in a way where, hey, this might actually be for you. You might have this problem. You've tried everything. You've tried the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. stuff. You, you might be drinking. You might be doing, doing all these other things, right? But you're, you refuse to ch try cannabis for whatever reason that may be. Well, yeah, and a lot of times it's because it was against the law or there was a stigma right. around it, you know. But um, you mentioned the research piece of it. You know, Israel's been doing research on cannabis since the 60s, 1960s. So um, a lot of the current research comes from them. But, you know, I think there's an opportunity for a lot more research and investments, especially here, yeah. um, especially if we go recreational. hundred percent. I'm sure we'll chat about that at some yeah. point as well. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's, that's crazy. I didn't know Israel was doing that. But there, wasn't there a point where it seemed like research budgets were going to kind of get ramped up? And then I forget which president it was, which kind of took some of those budgets away for research out here. Yeah, and I want to say it was like in the 60s and 70s. It, well, yeah, because there was the huge, you know, just say no, right. you know, drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was probably, a, I'm, I'm going to guess it was Nixon or uh, Reagan. Yeah, Nixon I mean, a lot, a lot of the cannabis uh, stigmas stem from racism and, and, and there's a history behind it. You know, it didn't, it wasn't called marijuana until uh, they decided they wanted to make it illegal and, and try to keep... Um, people outside the borders. Got it. So, you know, it was it was a cannabis or hemp product. And then all of a sudden, you know, they started calling it marijuana and um, then it became illegal, right? But mm -hmm. I think there was other reasons behind that. And unfortunately, we got stuck without being able to use this miraculous plant for so long. Right. Um, and, but now times are changing. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a work in progress. I don't think it's not going to happen overnight. It's one of those things that maybe the more people you get in their hands and the more education is out there and there are more dialogues like this that, that you have, you know, you, you hope to kind of shift that narrative out there. Um, really quick before we get into your story, right? What are some of the benefits that you've seen from maybe some potential, you know, customers that have come by and some of the testimonials that you've heard from some people that maybe weren't using cannabis in the past and now are using it now? Like what, what are some of the things that you've heard out there? Well, I, I don't know if I should talk about this later or not, but I will mm -hmm. say one thing I want to mention is that a lot of people don't know is you actually have an endocannabinoid system within your body. Okay. So you are producing cannabinoids, but a lot of times you're not producing enough or the um, production gets shut down for whatever reasons by medications we're taking or whatever's going on in life. So with that being said, the plant helps balance your endocannabinoid system. The plant has the cannabinoids growing within. So a lot of people are using it um, you know, we talked earlier about it, but you know, a lot of people are, the biggest use I would say is sleep, right? Okay. People, people want help sleeping. Uh, so I think like the number one selling uh, thing is like the indica gummies, right? Gotcha. People want something people to help them to sleep, to sleep and they don't want to take meds. I mean, um, for me personally, I was not only on a sleeping pill at one point, but that, that pill gave me a uh, bad dream. So then they said, oh, well, we'll give you something for PTSD. 
right? So now I'm taking two pharmaceuticals for sleep wow. yeah. when I could be using this natural plant, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Um, anxiety is another big piece. You know, mm -hmm. the I know you asked about testimonials. I when I worked at the store, I used to work at the Lake Worth store in Florida. I had people that came in that told me that um, by consuming cannabis on a regimen with a doctor, that their their tumors have gone away. You know, consuming cannabis and some of those cannabinoids when processed in your body create a really uncomfortable place for cancer to grow. Gotcha. And so that's that's one of the biggest benefits. I know we've heard about it with cancer, and a lot of people think it's uh, to help stimulate the appetite, right. which it can do that, right? Especially for people going through chemo and, and treatment. But it also uh, creates, like I said, a very uncomfortable place for cancer to continue to grow. And sometimes it, 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 people have told us that their tumors have gone away. Interesting. Um, it, there's a lot of uh, miraculous Yeah, um, you've heard, there's stories. a lot of stories out there of, you know, how it's worked uh, for, for people, you know. And again, it's one of those things like you don't know unless you try. And again, you, you, you obviously have to go to a doctor now and, and, and get this is prescribed the right word so what it, it's actually called a recommendation okay. and, and actually you touched on this earlier when mm -hmm. you said people react differently and everybody's right. a little different so they don't write you a prescription for specific things they write you a recommendation to use medical cannabis and then it's up to you to figure out which products uh, work for your wheelhouse gotcha because everybody is different okay so then i go to a doctor right i get this recommendation that you should try cannabis right yep. and then when i get this recommendation, am I receiving my medical card too? Yeah, so what happens is you'll go to the medical cannabis doctor, or medical marijuana doctor uh, throughout in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. You do have to see them in person for the first time. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, right now, they allow telehealth okay, okay. to renew your prescription or your Got recommendations. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you have a Florida driver's license, you can walk out same day and be able to purchase. Um, you're not, on, it is HIPAA protected, just like any other medical prescription, mm -hmm. uh, you, you are HIPAA protected. But if you have a Florida driver's license, they can pull your information through the DMV to verify you who you are who you say you are. Gotcha. And you can start purchasing that day. The card comes in the mail maybe a couple weeks later, but uh, as long as you have a valid Florida driver's license or passport, you're able to shop at CureLeaf during okay. that time. And then once you get your med card, you're able to go into the CureLeaf and then at a cure relief, someone is there to kind of guide you on what is the right product for you? Yeah, so every cure relief has a consultation room. And uh, some people want to sit down and talk further about either what they have going on, mm -hmm. what brought them in, or have questions about products. You know, it can be a little overwhelming yeah, for your first time because mm -hmm. there are so many options and so many strains. And, and then people are talking about terpenes, what are terpenes, you know. Right. Um, so, we love being able to share that information and talk about the products. Again, back I think to it's the, valuable. The passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? because I mean, I think there's the market that you know people will get their med card, they know what they want, and they'll they'll go there, they'll purchase it, and they'll be done. And that's that's a market in itself. But there's a whole other market which is like the curiosity market, is what I like to call it, right? Where it's like maybe, right? Like maybe I can use this. Maybe I don't use it every day, but you know, if I want to take the edge off one day and I want to go home and just kind of mellow out a little bit, you know, maybe there's something for that person. Or maybe like you said, there's, I've been having trouble sleeping and I can't figure something out that works for me. Maybe there's something there, but it takes a level of, of obviously the curiosity portion, but also the education side of things where it's like, I want someone where I know I can trust one and two, know that I'm getting a product that is safe, obviously. And two, that's going to work, right? Like, I think that's, that's the biggest thing because People, like you said, are taking prescription drugs all over the place and and they're just handing them out like candies, right? Like that's that's how it feels like almost. But here they are and they don't really work. And if they do, they come with a 7,000 other side effects, right? And oh, yeah. So it's like really pick your poison, right? And find something that does work for you. And I think more people that maybe want to make a transition to whatever that transition is are now gonna be more inclined to know, hey, if I walk into a cure leaf, I know I'm gonna be educated, I'm gonna be guided, right? And I'm gonna be, tr I'm, I'm, I, there's a level of trust there that now I know that whatever I'm getting might actually work for me. Well, and, and back to the trust uh, piece of it, you know, everything that cure leaf uh, produces is grown from seed to sale, right? So in the state of Florida, we're growing everything here in the state of Florida. Um, the Department of Health is part of that process. They're checking the plants. They're going That's in. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, we saw that. I mean, that experience was crazy. Um, and then, and then they go. The plants get processed in a factory, and again, all every batch of every single product gets 
uh, randomly tested by the DOH. And that's how you know that you're getting safe medicine. Right. Um, I think that's the biggest thing too. Yeah. I mean, they can track it from the seed yeah. to the to the leaf. Yeah, they the have flower. The, the barcode yeah. that literally tracks it from the, the moment it's created to the moment seed to it's sale. S- to the store. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but it makes sense. I, I, like you said, it there's there's nothing to worry about when you know everything's being tracked and held accountable, I yep. guess you could say. And then the other big piece, uh, you know, when they come in for the information, especially as a first timer, I'm, I'm really big on um, making sure people understand that they should be journaling or keeping track. Not, you don't necessarily have to journal, but you should yeah, keep yeah. track of what you're using, mm-hmm. right? Because sometimes we'll use products or we'll get a few different products. You may not remember how this one may be, maybe made you feel, right. how long the onset time to, to hit you was, you know, certain, for example, certain gummies are good for falling asleep versus is staying asleep and then they make you know they make they're made with different technologies okay so i tell people you know and then a lot of times they're buying all these different ones so take it test it try it and then and write down how exactly. it made you feel ah, it's, it's you a know? that's a good valid point i mean if you're going to be doing something you want to make sure that it's working and if it's not working why isn't it working and then you go to someone like yourself or other cure relief employees that could say hey you know what i know exactly what the problem is because you've been tracking it we can say hey you know what try this this might be a better solution for you exactly and it's important to keep track of your uh, milligram dosage right because Mm -hmm. everybody like you said reacts differently so people do um process differently as well so it's important like you said to keep track of what you're using Definitely. And then when you come back, you can say, hey, you can, instead of coming back and be like, oh, yeah, I had some pineapple, whatever, <laughs> you know, you have very specific. It's like, okay, right. you had this. All right. Got you. Yeah, no, it makes, makes total sense. So one thing that we were talking about beforehand, I know you've had your own journey with, with cannabis. Can you kind of speak on how cannabis was introduced into your life and how you use it to, to today? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So, um, First time I ever tried cannabis was in college. I, I, I waited, uh, or it was the summer going into college. And I liked it. You know, I was a little, the funny thing is, I actually wrote a paper on medical marijuana for my senior, uh, it was like a final senior paper I had to do. I had never tried it before. I don't know if this is subconscious or not, but both my parents were teachers, educators. And okay. I, I knew they were cannabis users, not super heavy, not in your face, but I, I knew that they used it. Yeah. But I also knew that they weren't drug users, right? They were very responsible uh, professionals. So I knew that there was something with it as a medicine. I just wasn't 100% sure. I waited to try it. I tried it. I loved it. You know, I became what they would call a pothead in college, <laughs> right? I mean, I was, I was smoking in the mornings, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, back in college, I didn't get to choose what I wanted. Right. I had very few options. I had, you know, this guy or that guy or maybe a friend and of a friend. And you're just trusting, saying, hey, this is what I got today. I got the... The sour pineapple, it's a hybrid, and this is what you're going to get. Oh, they, you know? they wouldn't but, even tell you all that, man. <laughs> Back when I was in college, I was getting seeds and stems, <laughs> and I was lucky if it smelled all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I was That's, lucky if the guy came back with the flower. A lot of times I'd give, you know, some, you have to trust you someone get. to give them money, and then mm-hmm. they'd go, and then, oh, something happened. 100%. You know? Yeah. So with that being said, then, you know, I, I, I graduated college. I, I moved back to Orlando. I started working for The Magic. And when I was at The Magic, um, there was a, definitely a stigma around uh, smoking in general. Um, so I definitely kind of hid my cannabis use, gotcha. but I was a user of it. Uh, instead, there were, it was a big drinking culture, right? I mean, Sports it's, is huge drinking culture. Sports, the schmoozing, I was in marketing and True. entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you were out drinking with people and you know especially the the arenas downtown everyone goes out after the games True. it's just part of that the i guess part of the, yeah, the, the culture and the, the culture yeah. so with that being said i became more of a drinker i kind of went away from some of my cannabis use to try to fit in with everyone and feel like i belonged well that was not a uh, necessarily a good choice for me because drinking led me to a um down a, a path of a lot of drug use as well and, you know, I, I don't need to get into the battle stories and war stories, but, you know, I became an alcohol drug addict for quite a long time. And I hid that, you know, I felt like I was almost living like a double life. Yeah. Um, you know, the funny thing is I remember sometimes coming home from work and I was like, hmm, should I, should I smoke a joint and just chill tonight? Or should I have a, a, a beer or a cocktail and then go hard? And I was, I, it's funny, I would make that conscious decision to That's go hard, yeah. you know, knowing where it would lead me. 
Well, with all that being said, I uh, eventually I went to a, a rehab program and down in South Florida, which I'm very thankful for, and I learned so much there. And, but they put me on a ton of pharmaceuticals. Uh, I think when I first got there, I was on it was either 11 or 13 pharmaceuticals. I was it, wow. was, it was shocking, really. Now I understand I was detoxing, and, and there was reasons to be on stuff. Right. As I moved through the the program, you know, they said I needed these. It was basically six medications that I needed to be on to maintain who I was. And you know, I continued to go to the AA program to. You know, I, I found out that AA wasn't as much about not drinking, that it was more about thinking, right? So I had to learn how to deal with life. I was turning to alcohol and drugs for my solution to things, and that's not my solution. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to deal with life on life's terms. With that being said, all these pharmaceuticals to regulate me, um, I just didn't feel like myself. I also had gone over 300 pounds. Wow. I was, uh, I was very unhappy. Um, you know, I was, I was trying to live in the moment, but I... I I wasn't very happy. Now, I decided to do some more research into the cannabis um, industry. I knew that medical had become a thing, and, but I didn't know much about it. So I started doing research as well as trying to get a, a career in it because I kind of wanted, I, I wanted to go all in. So I got my med card before I got hired uh, by Cureleaf, and I started using some of the products. I was able, within my first week, I was able to get off of two, two pharmaceutical pills, wow. a sleeping pill and a PTSD pill because I was having nightmares from the, the, the sleeping men mm -hmm. and, and, and what have you. Um, and this was just by taking a, a little gummy. And I wasn't getting high, I was just literally replacing my pharmaceuticals. Right. I also was on blood pressure medicine and uh, anxiety medicines during the day. Again, I found some products through Cureleaf that helped take that edge off without right. getting me high. I was able to get off of five of my six pharmaceuticals. I only take one, one pill anymore. Um, and even then, I've been talking to my doctor about tapering off because mm -hmm. I've found that cannabis has helped my life so much. I've, I lost over 100 pounds. That's incredible. Um, cannabis helped, you know, a lot of people think that it's going to give you the munchies and make you fat and lazy. Right. But, you know, my anxiety was crippling me. I would wake up in the morning and my body would be tight and tense. My head would be going a right. million. And I... You know, and even when I took the pill that they gave me, it didn't really do much. Maybe it calmed me down, made me a little tired almost. Right. But then I started using the cannabis products and I started going to the gym and started like going out for walks and then eventually started jogging. And then I got really into pickleball and it, it wasn't, you know, again, I wasn't using the cannabis products to get high. I was using them to literally medicate. Right, yeah. Uh, and, and get you ca like almost calibrated, yeah, essentially. To balance my endocannabinoid mm -hmm. system. Yeah. I was not a balanced person. And then, like I said, I lost weight. Um, I feel healthier now uh, than I did pretty much most of my life. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, you hear a story like that and it's like, damn, you know, like maybe there's something there, right? Because again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, people don't want to maybe make that decision, yet it might be the best decision for them, right? And I think more people need to just, I, I think there's a struggle where a lot of people are not very open-minded to things, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it's like, it's this way or no way, and people get stubborn in their ways. And it's not just with cannabis, it's not just with medicine, Politics. it's, it's I mean, with, it's with everything, everything yeah. right? And I forget where I was reading it, but, it, you know, there was a, oh, it was, it wasn't, I wasn't reading it. It was actually a Huberman Lab uh, podcast. Um, and he was saying how people that are more open-minded to things, you know, have tendencies to be more creative. They're going to have more energy. They're going to yeah, be happier people. Why? Because they're just in that state of mind that it's not so rigid, right? It's not like if it's, you got a square and you're trying to fit a circle into it, right? Like it's just not going to work. You got to kind of figure out what works for you. And through your own journey, you were able to figure that out. Yeah, I think cannabis is important. Uh, um, like I said, for me, it helps me stay mindful. It helps me uh, stay grounded. It, uh, you know, again, like you said earlier, there's some people that just want to use it recreationally, get, get the high and, and, that's and, and go with it. And yeah. that's, that's great uh, for them. For me, like I said, it, it's been a blessing to be able to help me become the, a, the best version of me that I've been in quite some time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And my family would all agree, you know, I, I you know, uh, my family thinks I'm healthier now and I'm dependable and I'm always around and, you know, I'm definitely by far the best version of me I've been. 
Now, I do go to AA still because of AA, helped. AA, yeah. AA to me is group therapy. Yeah. It allows me to go and talk about my problems or, or work through situations. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't have to talk about cannabis there. I, I go back to my rehab and I talk to the, the current patients. Again, cannabis isn't the solution to my problems. Cannabis is the solution to my medication problems. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. That's a really good put. It. By any chance, have you seen the show Louder Milk? Love it. Very <laughs> I funny. I figured. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's funny, and and the only reason I bring that up is because you see what that that group is like, the AA group, right? And he leads that group, and it's almost like they become like a family, right? Like they are there, and they just want to go there because they know that they're going to be around a bunch of group of people. They're not going to judge them for anything, but they're there to speak their mind and speak their truth. And we should be able to do that with everybody, right? I think a lot of people are very just judgmental overall. And sometimes you kind of like put this shell on almost, right? And it's like, you're only going to peek your head out when you're around the right people, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But, and, and listen, not to bash AA, but AA was, you know, we could talk about this on a different podcast, yeah. <laughs> but AA was a, it's, it's a book that was written in the 1930s, right? And it says no mood or mind altering substances. But again, they're, they're really quick to put you on all these dopamine serotonin boosters that are pharmaceuticals. Right. And those are hundred percent, in my opinion, mood and mind altering. So again, it, it's, it's not, it's not uh, being used to get high, yeah. but it's about that. Now we know you can actually medicate with cannabis and not get high and get off of these uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, I think there's something to be said that it definitely works. And if, again, if you go through these journeys, you do your due diligence and you really study and put yourself around the right people, you know, to figure out what, what works for you, even from the smallest thing to sleep to the biggest thing, like having you know, an addiction problem, there, there's something clearly to be said about it. And you're one of many cases at the end of the day that have proven that it has worked, right? Again, it goes back to what works for you. And I think you have to put yourself in that mindset that, you know what, I'm gonna give this a try and see, see, where, see where it takes you. I, I think it's something worth people exploring. Well, and back to the open-mindedness, you know, I, I do a lot of speaking engagements, especially at the 55 plus communities. You know, I, we are finding that seniors are one of our fastest growing uh, population of cannabis I users. I see that. And it's because they've been that. told their whole lives that it's a I drug and that. it's so bad. Yeah. You know, the reefer madness, stigma. Yeah, they, they have pain issues. They have, you know, they have inflammation. They have so many issues per and, se. And the pills aren't working. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're old enough now to be like, I've been trying this Very for so long and their doctors it are actually telling sense. them. I, I remember my grandma, <laughs> right? She was on and she took care of herself for the most part. She took care of herself later in life, right? She was always going to the doctor, making sure that everything was okay. Um, and just making sure that she would stay up to date on the things, but she was on plenty of meds and, and she still had the pains and she still had stuff. And I remember having the conversation her one day, like, maybe you should explore cannabis at some capacity, whether that was through a cream, right? I wasn't going to have her smoking a joint, but like, right. you know, uh, 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 an edible of some sort, something, right? Like I told her, I'm like, maybe she, she, uh, she should explore it. And I remember for her, it was like, there's no way in heck I'm going to do that, right? Like that was like how you said, like the elderly don't, didn't think that way. But the more I talked to her and the more she realized like, hey, this isn't working, she became more open-minded to it rest in peace, she, she ended up passing away just of old age, but she became actually curious on the fact that like, hey, maybe this could work strictly on the fact that what she was doing wasn't working. Yeah, I that remember something. I remember my nana, it was my grandma. Yeah, that's she, I called it. I called her nana too. Right, yeah. So my nana was trying some uh, remedy where she was soaking raisins in gin because it was supposed to be good for arthritis, right? <laughs> I mean, it didn't work. Yeah, that's when my grandma had but, arthritis. But if only I think she would be amazed, and I believe she would have been open minded to try it yeah. uh, if she was still around today as well. But um, I've given the topical gel, for example. Um, you know, I've used it on my knee and okay. uh, other people have told me that they've used it for their arthritis. And within minutes, the, uh, their pain in their hands has gone away. I, I, I believe that my grandmother would have been amazed yeah. by that product. <laughs> It would have been dangerous for him. Like, I need that all the time. Put it on my hand. Yeah, and it doesn't get you high. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah. she would have loved it. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, really cool. And I appreciate you for sharing that. I think that was a, a very insightful um, story. And I think, you know, a lot of people can can learn from that, which is always, I think that's always powerful, right? Like we, we learn from each other's stories, we learn from each other's experiences. And I always think that whatever you can garner out of someone's journey, I think is powerful because we all have our own journey that we walk and we all have 
kind of the the challenges that we face throughout life and it's not it's not easy right no. but you you did your part and i think that's powerful um not not a lot of people will do that and i'm sure you had a great support system around you uh through that journey which is also very powerful you know having good good people and just kind of lifting you up so i appreciate you for for sharing that and and you know just telling that story. I think yeah, that's, again, that's I'm, I'm, I'm very open. You know, I don't have anything to hide. You yeah. know, my journey helped kind of uh, shape who I am today. 100%. Uh, but, you know, even even people that didn't have, like, an addiction problem, you know, how many people are just on blood pressure medication? Yeah. Just from their genetics or mm -hmm. their age or what they're eating, right? I was able to get off a of blood pressure medicine, yeah. right? I mean, I had not, you know, by that's just big. using some cannabis yeah. uh, no, products. Big. So, anyway. 100%. But, no, it's really awesome. I really appreciate it. But... Other note on some of the other things that we wanted to talk about today, obviously uh, 420 is coming up, right? Yes. So what does Cureleaf have planned around uh, 420 this year? And what's uh, some of the things that you guys overall just kind of do um, for, for this holiday, I guess? Yeah, so 420 is like our national holiday. <laughs> you know, it's a big, exciting day. I uh, The stores are all going to be having ridiculous sales, right? Okay. Um, they're already receiving, I can tell you now, I'm not going to tell you what, but they're receiving boxes of gifts and swag that nice. they will be giving out at all of the Cure Leaf stores. Really cool stuff, too. Very cool. Um, I'll see if I can get you something. Or maybe come in and visit. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah. well, I'll be at the at the oh. at the pickleball tournament. So yeah, so. pickleball. So yeah. what we decided well, was pickleball has been you know back to the health and wellness side of cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually sponsored a pickleball tournament in Boca, and we didn't we realized like how many um, athletes out there are using cannabis, you know, and they were ex excited to see Curly sponsoring. Um, a sports type of event yeah so with that being said we decided let's hold a little pickleball i want to call it a tournament it's more of an activation so yeah pickleball playing yeah we're bringing out a pickleball court we we got custom pickleball paddles we'll be giving out for free nice we have food trucks we have music we have local artists and vendors you know we're big on trying to get some of our local artists and community vendors to come and, and pop up and be a part of our cure leaf family as well Very so cool. that's going to be a super fun this going to be we're actually going to do that for two days that's a 420 weekend extravaganza oh, nice. 420 know that. and 421 oh, okay, both cool. So, uh, so yeah, that's down in uh, like West Palm area, right? Yeah, it's going to be in the Palm Beach Gardens Cure Leaf, okay. so it's right off of North Lake okay. is, the, gotcha. is the road. And again, it will, it will be 12 to 7 both days. It's open play. It's, it's, we're looking at um, doing some instruction. There's going to be some practice courts, so don't feel like you have to come and start, uh, you know. Yeah, go out there and try, yeah. to, try to win something. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody will be a winner. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Um, in, our, time. in our Tampa market, we are doing an event with the uh, Tampa Skate Park, which is going to be super cool. fun. Yeah. So you go to Cure Leaf, you get your goodies, and then you head on down to the skate park, and they're going to have some really cool, like a private activation there for uh, any of the patients. That's cool. Um, and then in Orlando, Central Florida, they have this cool spot called The Acre. And there will be a uh, private cure leaf puff and paint for any of our patients that shop with us and then come visit us at the Acre. Very cool. Yeah, so you can check them all out. I, I don't know if you... Yeah, I think I got I got an Eventbrite link here, cool. so I can I could share that. Sweet. Um, and I'm sure it'll be on your guys' website, I'm assuming, we as well. We got it on Instagram. And, on Instagram? Uh, okay. Join our email list. If you're not on our email list, you should definitely get on because we do a lot of our um, event um, advertising through there. Okay. You know, we're out in the community all week long throughout the week yeah. um so no yeah, yeah these you are guys, big 420 you guys events. you guys do do a lot i mean the, the little that we've been working together now um i've seen the involvement that that you guys have in the community it's pretty awesome to see you guys get out there you educate people you let people know um you know what what it is that you guys do which i think is i think to me is the biggest thing right like to get people to get to jump on board it's just a level of education which I think that you know that begins with a lot of things that you do and that that community outreach portion of it. Yeah, so yeah, my job as a community outreach uh, associate basically is is not only I mean some people refer to me as like a uh, pharmaceutical rep, you know, <laughs> because I'm going to different physicians' guess, offices. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, the physicians I don't need to sell them on what we're doing because they're already into it. They already know that cannabis works and they're already telling people about it. So I go visit the the doctors, but a big part of it is just being in the community and swaying that stigma, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, sponsoring local, like I said, a pickleball tournament. We did three or five day in Miami. Yep. We did, we do uh pause and, uh, you know, pause and pints, uh, an event, you know, any, we did a seafood festival. So, you know, we're just trying to be a part of the community yeah. uh, and be, 
we're big in the golf space. So I know we've talked about maybe doing some some uh, you know cure leaf and golf uh, tournament or something around those lines because. We- there's a lot of there's a lot of cannabis in the in the golfing community too. We did a little thing with a little PGA tournament. Did you? Uh, yeah. When was this? Yeah, up in up in uh, Palm oh. Beach Gardens last yeah. year. I think last August. Okay. Yeah, it was a it was a special like round robin type tournament. Um, and yes, there was a lot of interest. They loved that we were the sponsor. Yeah. They said we were the best sponsor that came <laughs> in. You know, usually it's some tech company or right. investment company yeah. or, or Honda. You know, but. We were fun, you know. We're again. It's about having fun and being professional and, and helping the community. Yeah, amen to that. Cool. So the other big thing that's coming up uh, in the, I guess, in the pipeline this this year is the uh, Yes on Three uh, yes. here in Florida. Just high level. What exactly is that bill that's going to be? Uh, it's going to be present on this on this year's election. So. If you can give a little bit of context on that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you'll have to forgive me because I don't know all the details yeah. on it. But the idea is that Florida has been trying to go recreational with the cannabis for right. a while. Um, and there's a lot of positive benefits as to why, you know, for the state, but also for the, pe- you know, the people. But mm-hmm. we are a big tourism industry as well. So True. the number of people, I was at the South Beach Cure Leaf today, and the, the number of people that tried to come in and purchase something. Just thinking that they could walk in and... But didn't realize that you had to be a medical patient. So if we get to that point, of recreational, um, it's going to allow for more people to be able to use the medicine. Um, I think that uh, basically three is is saying that the state of Florida will now serve recreationally. You know, I, we're definitely saying we got to move forward with this, right? right. You, uh, the only way to progress is to continue with this, and 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 basically, it's following the same steps as other states, right? right. So you know, they go recreational and then they make changes and they exactly. move forward that yeah. way. Yeah, and again, it goes back to the whole thing, right? You you on the recreational side, right? It's still for medicinal purposes, you know, for for the most part, if you're gonna look at it in that lens, right? But now you can just walk into a store essentially and be able to purchase without a medical card, right? But it's still coming from a source that you can trust, right? I think that's the biggest thing for the recreational side, right? Because obviously the the cannabis on the medical side, you know, we went down that whole path (laughs) of why it's so, so important you know, for, for certain people, but there's going to be the recreational side that's going to open up a whole new market where people are just going to want to, you know, partake in cannabis. But you at least know that you're getting something good. You can talk to someone that knows what they're talking about and you're getting it from a very reliable source. And it gives people the opportunity to try before you buy, basically. Like, you don't have to get your medical prescription gotcha. and, and go all in, mm-hmm. uh, bef- bef- not knowing that cannabis, you know, a lot of people are nervous to try it for their yeah, first time. They've gone, they're 80 years old and have never tried it. Yeah, you know? imagine. So, you know, maybe they want to try a little something first and going recreational will yeah. allow for that. Um, like you said, it's still medicine. And and to be honest with you, you know, there's still going to be benefits to staying medical patients yeah. for, for a lot of users as well, you know. Uh, so it's it, once you decide what type of user you want to be, whether a recreational or medical, um, it's going to be out there for for both now. Yeah. You know, right now it's just a medical market, but uh, how great it will be when we have the market open to everyone. No, it'll be, it'll be something to see. I know when we went to the factory, everyone was like, it's a great thing, but... I don't know if we're ready for it because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to be purchasing cannabis. But we're ready for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, we 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 are we're getting ready for it. You know? The yeah. state is preparing. It's pre- um, preparation. Yeah, like I said, you, it models the way that other states have kind of mm-hmm. gone through the process. So we're we're just it's, yeah, it's, we're on our next step. Exactly <laughs> the next the next part of the journey. So it's, go out uh, and vote yes. Yes on three. <laughs> yes, yes on, on three. three. Oh yeah. All right, cool. So before we wrap it up, I wanted to just do a little quick. Rapid fire question brought to you by Cure Leaf, and uh, make it fun. Nothing, nothing cannabis related. Right. But um, if there was one meal that you could have for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. Like the full meal? Yeah, full, full meal or okay. I mean, specific I'm, food, but oh, yeah. I would say meal. That way, you're not limited to one item. All right. Well, this may sound strange, but I'm, I'm I really like uh, beef tartare, like okay. raw beef. I like really good. Uh, tartare with a nice quail egg yolk and some truffle on it. Right. That would be my appetizer. Though. We'll just start with okay. that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> For the dinner, <clears throat> I, I also like a nice filet or uh, a nice cut of, of red meat um, seared or Pittsburgh style where it's still raw in the middle, but you have some nice flavor on the outside. Okay. Accompanied with a lobster tail, of course. Um, Can't go wrong with a little surf and turf. Yeah, and I'm not a big carb guy, so I for sides, though, I am a 
diehard flash fried Brussels sprouts guy. Brussels sprouts are good. They are by far my favorite vegetable. Um, the, the, I like them specifically flash fried with like a honey sriracha, maybe a little bacon uh, in there, something like that. Yeah. That's 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 a pretty good. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, and then I for like dessert, it. for dessert, I'm a big fan of, of of a nice dark chocolate mixed with raspberry, something like that. I don't know what it looks like yet. But yeah, that's was, around that around yeah. those lines. Yeah. yeah, for me, I'm a big I'm a big steak guy too. So I feel I feel like steak would be in there for me. The dessert one is a little tough for me because I'm a huge key lime pie guy. Love a good key lime pie. And, uh, but then again, I'm a sucker for like, just like fudgy chocolate situation, you know? So like a, a fudgy brownie with ice cream. That's, that's one that, that's a toss up for me. I will say I forgot my favorite dessert and I'm sorry, but banana fosters is my favorite dessert. The, the flambéed bananas <laughs> with the brown sugar glaze. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. So, yeah. That's good stuff. I'll have it all. Absolutely. Um, next question. Uh, you have one celebrity or famous person or just anybody it could be anybody um that you could go to dinner with who would it be athlete anybody it could that's be. a great question i mean i'm gonna give you two answers because the the i lost my mom when i was in my 20s so if i could go to dinner with my mom again Absolutely. especially as an adult and, mm-hmm. and and go over my journey i would 100 percent amen to that you know no question to this. Not a doubt. um i would say uh this may, I, I actually have met this guy a few times, but I would say Shaquille O'Neal. And the reason one. why I was growing up in Orlando as a, as a kid, you know, yeah. that's what actually started my passion for the Orlando Magic. I think that kind of kid started for a my, lot of people. my career with that. And um, I really, he was a hero to me growing up. And uh, so I would love to dine with my hero. We got we to gotta find Shaq and, and send him this clip. <laughs> that would be sick. That would be cool. Shaq, Shaq, Shaq's one of my favorite people. Oh, he's awesome. I he mean, is like from every, I mean, he's jovial. He's a smart business guy, obviously great, iconic basketball player, one of the best ever I mean, and extremely giving. I mean, the guy checks all the boxes of like how, you know, someone would want to live their life. Um, also coming from, you know, nothing was given to him. He's earned every single thing in his life. So I admire the hell out of Shaq and I, I, and I love how he just is always having fun through it all, yeah. right? Like even when you see, I don't know if you've seen some of his documentaries, but in the back in the day when he was young and he was, he was, he was always messing around. He was always having a good time. Yeah, he's been a big kid yeah. for his whole life. <laughs> his whole life. Now he's just like a bigger, older kid, but yeah. But yeah. I mean, I, I like <laughs> the inside the NBA show that they do on TNT after the games. It doesn't, it, like, I know. it's so the late. Di- the but the I, dynamic between but him and uh, Barkley. And Barkley. I mean, they're just so good together. And yeah. um, I, I absolutely love that show. Me but, too. Yeah. They, make, they make it. Those guys will go there and they will never take them off. And Ernie is a good compliment to that. He's wonderful too. Yeah. 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 I agree. Who's your dinner guest? <sighs> My dinner guest. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I think it would be a two part question. I think it would be my grandfather. Uh, he died when I was, when I was young as well. And I never really, you know, I would like to have a relationship with him at this part of my life. Right. And have that, that kind of dialogue. Um, but on the celebrity side, Shaq is a really good one. Like not like when you said Shaq and I'm like, damn, Shaq, Shaq is a good one. But I don't know. I don't know. There, like, I'm not like a super fanboy kind of guy. Um, I think. Is there anyone's brain you like, want to pick? Like, I think like a Matthew McConaughey would okay. be cool. I've always kind of like gravitated to his energy and kind of like the way he kind of goes about life. Um, Bob Marley is another one that, oh my God. That's if that guy was alive, I would like to just sit with him, have a, have a little spliff with him or something on the beach and just pick his brain. Um, I, I would say that would probably be, be my guys. Unfortunately, they're, they're all not alive, but I guess that's. Those are good answers. But yeah, Bob Marley is like a big inspiration Have for just the way. Have you seen the movie? Of, uh, yes, I did. I saw it the day it came out. Actually, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. I like I, some of the things I enjoyed. Some of the things I like. I'm just such a big Bob Marley guy. I think I wanted it to be longer, and I think it was a little almost rushed. And I feel like we could have seen a lot more. Okay. But for the most part, I think they did a great job. The acting was great. The 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 incorporation of the his music into the movie. Um, and showing the thing that I didn't know as much was the whole aspect of his wife slash 
you know, uh, girlfriend, you know, whatever you want to call it. Cause I haven't did. seen it yet. So oh, don't give it away now. Don't give it away now. I thought you see. No, so I highly recommend watching it. It is really good. Right. It is really good. Um, but last question of the rapid fire is, uh, what's your favorite cure leaf product? Oh, well, that's easy. It's, <laughs> it, it's called squeeze. So, okay. uh, squeeze the day instead of seize the day. That <laughs> is a drinkable THC product. And I am, in fact, when I was just an employee at the store before I got my marketing gig, I created an Instagram account for Squeeze just as a fan wow. because I love it that much called Squeeze the Day. Um, like I said, it's a drinkable THC, but it's a fast acting product. Right. So most, usually when you're ingesting THC, you process it in the liver. When you process THC in the liver, it, it usually takes longer to hit you because you have to metabolize right. it. It lasts longer as well. Uh, I like someone that likes instant gratification. So what they do is they, it's nano encapsulated, basically water soluble okay. THC. So it bypasses your liver and goes straight to your bloodstream. So crazy. You feel it super quick. So in fact, when I was telling you I wake up with anxiety and I used to be on anxiety meds, I use squeeze in the morning. I mix it with coffee or, or okay. a caffeinated beverage. And Interesting. So I, you have coffee with that? Yeah, yeah, because I still need my up with right, wake, up, up. wake up. Yeah, to wake but, up. But you know, because even though I'm anxious and I'm feeling tight in my head's like this, I still feel tired, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's the anxiety that makes me feel that way. Of so, course, yeah. So mixed with my caffeine, it just gives me the, mo the most beautiful wake up. Um, if I have time, I'll go play pickleball or to the gym, nice. like I said. Uh, otherwise, that I, I just go on with my day. And then uh, I also don't drink alcohol anymore. So it allows me to go out to these social functions because, of course, like alcohol is still part of the community. So, course, you know, yeah. when I go out with people to watch a game or the other places, you know, they won't let you necessarily light up a, a, a joint at the <laughs> <Right>. bar. <laughs> but I can bring my squeeze and I mix a little bit with some Fair. soda water yeah. and it's sugar free. I get nice. my I get my nice relaxation going. Very cool. Um, hands down. Best product. Very cool. For I got to check that out. Cool. All right. Well, that about wraps it up. I think we covered everything that, that we wanted to cover today. So again, thanks for, for jumping on. I'm sure we'll do something like this again soon. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you. We got a bunch of events coming up for, for 420. We got the pickleball tournament. If you're you know down here in South Florida, Tampa's got the skate park and uh, the painting in Orlando. So plenty of things coming up. And uh, yeah, we got a couple of things coming up on our end on the State Tranquilo side that we're excited about. And uh, yeah, just happy to be able to do this today and uh share that all that knowledge i think that we that we were able to share today well i appreciate you having us you know i i we we obviously uh like working with you guys and uh we like working with you know the state we like to be able to commu uh, educate and communicate with everyone so thank you amen yeah 100 well cool appreciate it guys so make sure to follow cure leaf uh, i think it's cure florida cure right? dot florida um and then cure dot usa for the national page but you know give them a follow on instagram and uh, yeah, like, subscribe to the podcast, share this with friends, share this with family, whoever you want, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers. Pass. <laughs>